G'day. I want to take five minutes of your time right now to introduce you to something that's quite remarkable. A distillation of what makes the world go round. And with it, I think you can change your life and change the lives of those around you. I'm Chris Walker and I'm really happy to be presenting this information, the universal laws of nature and how they apply to life. Let's talk the first principle, the law of balance. There's two sides to everything. It seems really, really obvious when you go out in nature that there's an upside and a downside, birth, life, um, good, bad, chaos and order. But you know, when you come back and start applying it to your own life, goodness gracious me, people find it so hard. They find it hard to understand that for every upper, there's a downer. For every depression, there's an elation. So really, when we talk about finding ourselves in a good place, we find ourselves saying we don't want to be motivated by emotion. Emotion is imbalanced thought. The second principle, the law of evolution. Well, if you go out in nature once again, you'll see that there's chaos and there's order. There's spring and there's autumn. There's winter and there's summer. And it's the same thing in your life. Every single day, something has to let go. Something has to die for something new to come in. We hold on to very intensely the thoughts and the imaginations that we've got. And we don't understand that when we're holding on to one thing, we can't hang on, can't take a grip of the next. Chaos and order. The definition of love in a relationship is support and challenge. If your partner is challenging you and you want to run away from that and you think there's a self-development course on earth that can change it, you've got another thing coming. Nature rules. Nature says grow at the border of support and challenge. The third principle, the law of interconnectedness. I love this principle. What it basically says is there's nothing missing. Everybody has everything they ever could dream of in their lives. It's just not in the form that they want it in. In other words, there's beauty all around us. Even if it's not the form that we want it in, we can find it. When I take people into Nepal, high up in the Himalayas, they're shocked and stunned at how simple life can be. They look at the, the young children, they look at families and they think, my goodness, they haven't got much money, but they have wealth and they have health. So the form of their abundance is just in a different package. Now we need to get a grip on this because walking around with I want to this and I want to that makes us unappreciative. And even if we do learn the laws of attraction and we do learn how to magnetize things, if our motivation is coming from I haven't got something, I, it's coming from an, a minimalist position and whatever we get, we'll sabotage and lose. So remember, chaos and order, support and challenge. The fourth principle, the law of harmony. What you appreciate grows. This is the most important thing you can do in a relationship. Remember that the most romantic thing you can do to any human being on earth is to thank them. And this goes the same in your workplace. You might not want to be romantic at your workplace, but you certainly want to motivate people to do their best. People are motivated to do their best when you appreciate what they do. Instead of criticizing people and telling them how you wish they could change, focus on what they do. Remember, there's two sides to everything. It's the first law of nature. There's a good side and a bad side. So what are you going to do? Be unconscious and focus on all the bad news and the negatives, or are you going to be conscious and say, yep, there's two sides to every coin. There's absolutely two sides to every leaf. There's two sides to everything in the world. You have the choice with your mind and your self-control to choose which of those two you're going to focus on. The next principle is coming right up. But remember, appreciate what you've got or you'll lose it. The fifth principle, the law of the one and the many. You know, in our lives, we can, uh, we can set goals and we can set dreams and we can set ambitions. But you know what the truth is? The truth is that every time you get something, you want something more. That's the law of the one and the many. It says when you aspire to something and you get it, nature will give you a greater ambition. So when we talk about life, we're talking about how can I take more responsibility? If I've achieved all my financial goals, how can I start motivating myself by wanting to help others, by having a bigger picture? If I'm in a relationship, how can I build a bigger dream than just a couple of children in a house? Maybe now I can talk about a thousand children and a few other children in other parts of the world. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you've got any questions, email me.